gamers welcome back to another review today's game is Mad Max the game is produced by Avalanche Studios the creators of Just Cause and published by WB now a lot of you guys are thinking WB not another Arkham it's gonna be unoptimized oh man not true at all the game is optimized real well I had words from other people and many other people with dinky machines saying the game runs perfectly fine for them I had family members on dinky machine run it fine so I'm gonna trust their word on this because I own a Titan X now and it just basically eats everything and throws it out so the game runs really fine it looks gorgeous prior to the release I did read some of the reviews I thought it was a sort of survival game it wasn't at all you know I heard complaints about gas and water and bullets I was like, what? Is this some kind of survival game? And when I played the game myself, 30 hours in, beat the game, got almost all the trophies. You know, I found the weak spots of the game, some of the weak gameplay elements and rep repetitions. The game is not a survival at all. In fact, it's the opposite. It's way too easy. So we'll get into that in a bit. But that's my rant for today for some of those reviews. They know who they are. It's a damn shame they didn't play the game all the way. But anyways, we're going to get into the game real quick and talk about the game. The game starts off with Max heading for the Plane of Silence when he is stopped by Lord Scrotus and his gang. All his stuff stolen from him, he gets his V8 engine taken away, his car, etc. And he's left in the desert to die. But luckily, there was another person out there to help him, a hunchback by the name of Chum Bucket. Chum Bucket's gonna build him a Magnum Opus, which is another car. V6 engine, and he's gonna upgrade it for him as he progresses through the game. He's gonna fix it for him. Chum Bucket is basically your bro in the game. So along the way towards his goal of vengeance and getting his stuff back, he runs into other factions, which gives him side quests. He can either do it and help them out, so he gets benefits out of that, upgrade his vehicle, or he can upgrade their stronghold and earn benefits for himself. That's pretty much the story of the game. The game storyline was not as exhilarating as I thought it would be, and it wasn't even tied to any of the movies itself. It just wasn't that great. The characters in the game, not as memorable as I thought they would be. The only person I remember in the game the most is definitely Chum Bucket and Max. So the story of the game is sort of on the weak side. The dialogue for the story, however, for this game was really colorful. I love the dialogue used in the game, like Chum Bucket calling himself Black Fingers, and then you have like people like the Organic Mechanic and the Holy Prophecy. It's it's really colorful languages, and that's what I like about the dialogue in the game. So it had some really nice voice acting. The voice acting was great, and the dialogue was very colorful and great, and it immerses you into the world of Mad Max. Aside from that being immersive for the game itself, the other thing is that the environment for the game is very immersive also. It's a wide open world area. Uh, you have to stay within the limit of the map. If you drive out there to the big nothing, you're just going to lose health and die. But restricted in the zone, it's a really big space. It's separated by regions. You'll see a lot of landscape. Valleys and you'll see canyons and you'll see all this great environment if you're not following the game it's actually when the water receded and that's the world of Mad Max so you're seeing all these things that are underwater and it just blows your mind the environment they did a great job on it and the best part about it is when you're driving in your car you're running over rocks you're seeing oil fields you're like wow this this is what the ocean used to look like now aside from all the environment in the game being immersive there's also a day and night cycle in the game and there are also storms in the game. There's windstorms, sandstorms, and there's also lightning sandstorms. During sandstorms, you'll see scrap flying around. It's dangerous, you gotta take shelter, or you can brave them and get extra scrap out of that. So, and it happens once in a while, so there's a huge bonus out of it if you decide to brave the storms, but they are some of the most thrilling moments in the game. There are two types of gameplay for the game for the combat. First, you got the melee combat, which is basically similar to the Arkham games, left for punch, you know, right for parry, and pressing spacebar will dodge. That's pretty much the combat of the game as it upgrades along. You won't get too much of a complex combo system. It's very easy to do. You'll get shanks that you can instantly kill people with in the middle of combo, and you can also use a shotgun. The other combat system to the game, which is definitely the star quality, would be the car combat. The car has abilities to shoot flames on the side, shoot a harpoon out, you can use your shotgun in it. Uh, the sniper rifle on the back can only be used when you're in the back of the car and you can ram the cars or run off and grind against their wheel but as you can see here the car has a lot of customization it's got a lot of nice body work and you can even collect enemies car to use as your own now the only downside to all these car parts etc is that you have to unlock them and in order to unlock them you have to do 
the various activities throughout the wasteland. There's a lot of activities you have to go through. There's a lot of items you have to find to unlock certain pieces you want and certain things you have to upgrade at a stronghold to get what you want. So it's not easy and it requires a bit of work and grinding and it can get tedious at times. Now some of the varieties of activities you can do in the map of the wasteland is taking down these scarecrow towers with your car. You can take down enemy convoys for these epic hood ornaments that you can place in the car for buffs. Taking out your dog in the buggy to disable minefield. There is finding scrap events in relic location. There's racing events which you can compare score with on the leaderboards and friends. Uh, sniper towers and finally taking down strongholds which are full of defenses. Now a lot of you guys are thinking, oh what about the hot air balloon in the game? Do you get to fly? Not really. They're used as towers in the game to survey the surrounding lands. You can find all these activities. Fortunately they only fly up and they go back down. The only downside to these activities and events in the game is the fact that they do become a little bit tedious over time. You're just going to do the same things over and over again. Take down this tower, destroy this guy, go to the stronghold, fight these same amount of enemies everywhere. I mean the enemies in strongholds don't really change. There's always a war crier and a bunch of mobs. You just beat them up, take over and blow the gasoline tank and you're good to go. It's just... Of course, when you travel through all these strongholds, there are optional quests of finding scraps and certain pieces of items that you can shoot off, like insignias. They get irritating at times because if you miss one, you have to run through the entire stronghold over and over again to find it. It just can drive you insane. Some of these strongholds in the game do contain bosses, and the bosses in the game are uninspiring. The reason being, most of them look the same. All they have is a different armor and a different looking weapon, but they do the same pattern of moves over and over again. They'll use a unblockable move. All you have to do is dive out of the way, beat them up in the back, and pretty much you're done. So it's a rinse and repeat. Now, as I said before, people were complaining about the gasoline, the ammo, and the water and food in the game, which isn't true. A couple hours in the game, as you level up Max, he becomes really OP. He gets to use Fury Time more, more health, uses less gasoline when he drives, gets more ammo out of corpses, etc. Heck, this system actually becomes broken as you play the game because what's going to happen is he's going to carry a gasoline tank on him but you're never going to have to refill your car that much because you're barely going to use any gas anymore. Unfortunately, gasoline becomes, you know, useless. Nope. And then water becomes useless because you get so much water out of one single source and bullets you can find on plenty of bodies. In fact, you'll get so much bullets in the game you can shoot up an entire stronghold if you wanted to. Fury mode itself also kind of goes broken in the game as you upgrade it because you're going to come to a point where when you're doing, you know, just a few combos on enemies, you're going to be able to enter Fury mode right away. And with that, you'll be able to take down any enemies very easily. It becomes a very casual game to a point where you're just doing a few couple punches, you're in Fury mode again and again. I guess the biggest problem is that the enemies don't really advance in the game. As you play the game and you get stronger, the enemies don't really change up they don't change their patterns they don't change the way they are they're always the same type of humanoids that you're going to be fighting and so it doesn't become challenging anymore the healing aspect of the game is also quite interesting at first it's not a kill over time game you have to kill stuff to survive you can kill lizards you can kill rats you can kill birds and you can also eat dog food or maggots from corpse so the healing is quite interesting but unfortunately it also breaks later on in the game when you start upgrading strongholds when you start getting more water when you start finding all this food everywhere it's littered quite literally everywhere so you're going to be able to kill yourself easily the only time i died in this game honestly is when i do stupid stuff or stupid things happen to me now unfortunately what dumbs down the aspect of challenge in the game is the stronghold. When you start upgrading your stronghold to full maximum, what's going to happen is anytime you warp to a stronghold you'll get full health, full ammo, full gasoline, full everything, and pretty much the challenge of the game just disappears during this point of the game. Unfortunately it's nice to have, but the point of scavenging and challenging in immersion is to go look for it. So this aspect disappears from the game completely when you upgrade your strongholds. So that's pretty much my review of the game. It's a great game to play. I got a deal for it for $35 on Green Man Gaming, so it was definitely worth it. Uh, the game is very immersive and atmospheric, and the feeling of just driving around in your car and just killing things was really fun. Unfortunately for the game, though, you know, later on in the game, as you progress in the game, the enemies become easier. They never really progress with you. The challenge just goes away. And also the fact that when you upgrade your stronghold, everything else about the scavenging aspect and the gameplay itself gets thrown out the door. So unfortunately, it becomes tedious and a bit of a grind. But overall, not a bad game, not the best game, so hopefully we'll see a better game from this in the future. If they decide to make another Mad Max, who knows?
That's my review for Mad Max. Thanks for watching and game on. Yeah.